Good morning, good morning, good morning. My supply of seeds have come in from the botanical interest in a lovely box. And no, this is not a sponsored video. But today I want to start some of my seeds indoors under grow lights. And my concern are seeds for the pollinators. This is the milkweed, this is fennel, and this is dill. I'm concentrating on seeds that will bring more pollinators to my garden naturally. And these are the host plants for a lot of the butterflies. So I'm going to get started by using the pellets. The peat pellets um, are the easiest way that I know that you can start your seeds indoors. Uh, everything that you need, including the labels, uh, are all in a kit. So what I'm going to do is Instead of using all of the cells, I'm going to use about four of the cells. The rest I'll take out. But what I would like to do is take a pot of hot water, and eventually I will use the remaining pellets, but I'm just going to start off with my pollinators for the butterflies and place them under grow lights. So I'm gonna take these out, and while I prepare for um, the seeds that I will need, the labels and everything, I'm just going to take and place some hot water over the pellets. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the pellets that will expand just by adding hot water or warm water to the tray and just pouring it over the pellets so they will expand. And if there are any egg larvae for the gnats, the hot water will um, actually kill the gnat eggs. And see, they've already started to expand and I'll let this cool off before I actually start, before I start to place my seeds in the pellets. And I'm just gonna expand it a little bit uh, so they'll have room, uh, space to grow under grow light and that'll be fine. So that will cool off. And because we're only starting with seeds, everything that you need to begin the growth of your seeds are in the seeds itself. And this has no fertilizer in it. So while this cools off, let's go back and look at some of the seeds that I'm going to start using as my pollinators. Okay, so the kit, comes with everything. I usually save the tray for the uh, season when I do my uh, cuttings because the plastic dome becomes its own greenhouse. But you can buy the pellets separate. Um, so once I see these uh, and they grow on, I can start another batch and I'll save these for later because I did purchase a lot of seeds. I have watermelon. I have the switch chard, more spinach, and the list goes on and on. Some of the um, seeds I'll direct. So uh, after our first frost, which is April the 15th, and from previous experience, I know that even though our frost date in zone seven is April the 15th, I usually wait until after Mother's Day. Let's get started. I'm going to label each area. I have four cells of uh, peat pellets. I'm going to use the milkweed. 
I'm also going to use fennel and I'm also going to use dill. And if you follow me on my videos from last year, you know that I also saved the seeds from my already existing butterfly weed. So I'm going to use this today because this is a different variety, but they were purchased through uh, botanical interests uh, over a couple of years back. So these are viable seeds, so I'm going to use these as well. And the reason I'm using milkweed, even though I have a butterfly bush out back, and I love the color of the butterfly bush, butterfly bush is not native to my area. So I'm trying more and more to incorporate more native plants to my garden. Um, will I pull out my butterfly bushes? No, I'm just going to have a balance of the butterfly weed and a butterfly bush. Okay, so should for any reason the butterfly bush uh, dies, then I will remove that, but I would not replace it. So I'm just going to use the seeds to bring in more pollinators. Uh, the milkweed is definitely the pollinator for the monarch butterfly. The fennel and the dill are also a favorite of the butterfly, uh, the black swallowtail, and I'm going to sow seeds for that. Now, you can actually use fennel and dill in your herb garden. And given this an opportunity to cool down, move out of the way, and I'm going to open up the seeds that I will need. And because I'm using a row for each seed that I'm going to sow today, so I'm going to write out my labels. Let's see. Because you will start and before you know it, you'll forget exactly what you're sowing in each cell. I'm going to do four labels, one for each row, and then I will actually uh, mark the dates as well as the seeds that I'm using. Most of my seeds come from botanical interest, but I do occasionally purchase seeds from other um, providers, uh, Ferry Morris and a couple of others. So. I'm just going to open up the pack. Botanical interest gives you a host of information about each seed that you're going to sow, when to, how to sow it indoors or outdoors. Okay, so now that the, the pots have hydrated, I'm just going to add for the precaution of those pesky gnats on the seed pods, but on the pellets, but I'm going to just place a few drops um, in the spaces near, okay? And then just let those continue to cool off. And the beauty about the pellets are the casing that they're in. All of this is biodegradable. So once the seeds actually have their true leaves, you can um, place this, if it was after your first frost, you could place this actually in the ground in your garden. And over a period of time, the um, netting that it's cased in, the casing will actually go away. So I'm going to start off now that the pellets have cooled off with my dill. And the dill seeds are tiny. And I'm only going to place maybe four to each pot. So usually I just try to sprinkle out what I need because they are tiny. 
and I don't want to oversee. I'll save some for later. I can direct sew outside. So I usually just take a skewer, um, dip it in a little bit of water, and just pick up the seed and place it on the pod. And I'll do that in four areas of each pod, um, just so it doesn't overcrowd. And primarily what I'm trying to do is make sure that each seed has enough room to germinate. Um, if it's a viable seed, then it will, um, I'll have to look at the uh, package to see exactly how many days it should take for me to see germination. Days to emerge is 25 days at the most. So if I don't have any germination within 25 days, then I know the seeds uh, wasn't any good. And in most cases, I don't have that problem. But they're so tiny that it makes it easier for me just to use a, a skewer and just uh, place the seeds, space them out evenly in the uh, pods. Now I will tell you, if all four uh, seedlings come up, then I will cut off the least likely one that will not um, that I will not use. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to pull it out and disturb the roots of the other seedlings. So I'll continue to do the same thing. Uh, with the rest of the seeds, just place four in each of the uh, pods. This way you don't waste your seeds. I mean, you have, for the price that I paid $2.29, I can actually uh, use these again for next year. Uh, if I choose to, I could actually uh, direct sow come the summertime in the backyard. And, uh, and I will, because I do like dill. Um, when I start my seedlings for my herb garden. So I'll do that. I'll come back. The seeds for the fennel are a little bit bigger. I'll add those and then I'll continue on. So let's say this takes longer to germinate than these over on this side. Just pop them out. Either you can put them in another, uh, pot them up to a larger container. In my case, that's probably what I'll do. And then come the spring of the year, I can start the process of hardening off the um, each uh, container. The process of hardening off because you got to remember, I'm growing these indoors under grow lights because if I was to place this outside, right now it's too cold. It won't survive outside. But in my garage, I have a heated um, mat, the heated mat and a miniature greenhouse, uh, a pop-up greenhouse that will keep them uh, at the temperature that they need in order to germinate. So that's done for the uh, deal. I'll come back and you see, I still have some seeds left over. I will place them back again. I'll make a notation the year that I've purchased these seeds and they should be viable for a few years. Okay, so the fennel seeds, uh, germination, 
uh, they should emerge within seven to 14 days. So these will come out before these are ready to come out and I'll separate them. These are the fennel seeds. And again, I'm just going to place four in each pod, um, whichever is the stronger of the bunch. I will keep the others I will snip off instead of pulling out um, just because you don't want to disturb the root system of the other fennel seeds that are starting to germinate. This is an easy process. Uh, so I find that this works for me when I want to get ahead of uh, starting my seeds indoor instead of waiting until the spring of the years to actually um, place them in containers outside. But again, like I said, when you do this method, you still have to harden off your seedlings. And when I say harden off the seedlings, I'm talking about taking the opportunity to take these seedlings that have grown under grow lights without any wind, air, sun, and giving them the process of uh, becoming acclimated to the weather outdoors. And you usually do that for like a week. So in the instance of, let's say my frost date is April the 15th, I will, which is supposed to be the last frost date, I will start the process of hardening off these seedlings. I will not leave them outdoors, but after May the, what's Mother's Day? May the 15th, I'm gonna say, then I will start the process of actually uh, placing them in the containers or in the case of the milkweed, place them in the ground. All signs of frost should already, uh, should already be, well, the weather has been so undeterminable. Is that a word? Undeterminable? Undetermined that uh, it should be safe to have all your seedlings outdoors. So let's try that. Okay, the fennel was done. Now the milkweed. And like I said, I do love, I have puckster butterfly bushes outside. I will not remove them. But the key is when I'm out purchasing my flowers for this year, my goal is to add more native plants to my garden. And that may mean eliminating something that uh, I would normally want in my garden, but first looking at all of the native plants that I can bring into the garden as well. Okay, so now I'm up to the milkweed, butterfly, flower, hello, yellow. And the hello yellow takes up to 28 days before it will emerge. So let me remove that one. That is a fennel seed. We don't need that. That's going to be an extra one down in the center of the fennel. Okay, so uh, this pack doesn't come with a whole lot. So let's see. So I'm definitely going to, if I love it, come the summer, if I love this, I will definitely save seeds from that because for the price that I paid, I know that I can save the Hello Yellow uh, from the plant itself. Uh, milkweed will have seeds and in a previous uh, video I did show you how to take a rubber band and band off the pods so that the seeds don't fly all over your garden and self-pollinate. So um, 
take that into consideration if uh, you want to save your seeds from any particular milkweed. Uh, use either a rubber band or a rope to tie up the pods. If you don't want to save seeds, once you see the pods starting to uh, appear, and that's normally after you have um, had the flower in bloom, then just cut off the pod. And uh, if you have a compost bin, just go ahead and stick it in your compost bin. So that's what I will probably do. Uh, save some of these seeds. I, this is my first year growing the Hello Yellow uh, milkweed. And there's all types. It's common milkweed. And the list goes on and on and on. But I do have enough area that uh, I can actually start allowing more of the milkweed and plants to use in my garden that are native for the pollinators. So I think I'm gonna have just enough to put four uh, seeds in each pod. How about that? Just enough. Okay, and the depth, you don't really need to uh, cover them up that much. The milkweed does not require stratification uh, in order for them to germinate. As with the other flowers such as uh, your cone flowers, they need a little more TLC. So I'm just going to place those down inside. And as you can see, I've already labeled each area. This is the milkweed, hello yellow. This is my milkweed, and I can't remember, even though I purchased it through Botanical Interest a few years ago, um, and I would just have to go back on the website to see the name, but that, the milkweed that is orange, that I will call it, is the seeds that I saved from last year. So I'm just going to place four in each of the pods and I have plenty plenty more um, milkweed seeds that um, I can actually grow at a later time uh, our community usually have a yearly yard sale and I can either gift someone with milkweed our local gardening community has uh, seed swaps so I can give milkweed. I personally don't need to save any more of the orange milkweed. I want to get the uh, common milkweed. I believe it's a um, pink in color. So I just want all types of variety. Yes, I do love to sit out in my backyard in the summertime and see the butterflies uh, in the backyard. I've actually captured a couple of the, a couple of the butterflies actually nesting and laying their eggs, their larvae on the uh, underside of the milkweed plant. And yes, once the larva uh, begins to grow, I've lost the seed right over here. There it is. Um, it will eat the leaves of the 
the milkweed. And that's perfectly fine. It doesn't harm the plant at all. Okay, now that I have all the seeds in, the best part is to dome. <laughs> this is the easy part. To dome your seedlings. I have a heat mat out in the garage that I'm going to place them in. And uh, there's enough moisture in here to start the germination process. And um, in seven days, I'll come back and double check on the seedlings to make sure that they are viable uh, in, in the case of uh, the milkweed. The milkweed is going to germinate within seven days. The others take just a little bit more time. So once that process is done, you can remove them, put them into another container if you choose to, and allow them to continue to grow. And just because there's no fertilizer in here, once you see the true leaves of each plant, then you can start the process of feeding them a solution of fertilizer and start the process of growing out. And come the spring of the year, you're ready to go. You're ahead of the game. You're actually saving money by growing your own seedlings. I'll continue to place 2023 on these packs and put them in my container so that I know that uh, the year that I purchased them and usually on the back of the seeds it will tell you exactly how long. Now in this case it says it was packed in 2023. I didn't even have to write it on there and the sale date is by December 31st 2023. So in the case of the botanical interest, it already tells you exactly when these seeds were purchased. And you can go from there to figure out um, how long or if the seeds are viable or not. So hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, happy gardening.